gorgeous day today. Driving along the highway, and something funny happens when we step on our brakes. We step on the brakes, and see that steering wheel shaking. Well, the cause of that vibration comes down to these, and this is called a brake rotor. This is what stops your car. But what happens is, is these rotors can get warped. And what I mean by warped is, picture like an old vinyl record that was left out in the sun, how it's got all those waves to it. And the brake pads squeeze onto this metal as it spins. If this piece of metal is warped in any way, what happens is, is the whole assembly does this, and that is transferred up to your steering wheel. So this is the issue here. Now in this car, I'm going to be replacing the rotors. This is not the only solution. There is something you can do called machining, and what that means is that you can take your old rotors off of the car, put them onto a special machine that basically takes out all those high and low points on the disc. So machining the rotors mean, or resurfacing means that there's a cutting tool that is designed to take a rotor that is warped and turn it into something that is straight. There's only so much metal you can take off of this. In fact, see they have minimum thickness ratings. So this right here is as much metal as you can take off of this and still have this be a safe rotor. The less metal you have in the thickness of the, this rotor, the more likely it is to warp again. So there's only so far that you can go with these. In this case, we're just gonna replace them. Okay, before you get started, leave the key in the on position, uh, but don't leave the car on, so actually it would be a accessory position. Fluid comes down through this hose, and behind there's a metal piston underneath here. And what that does is it squeezes onto the brake rotor itself. So it just sort of grips it, and that's what stops your car. It turns the speed of the car into heat. So I'm just going to take the lower fastener loose with a wrench. Yoink. Now I'm also going to take this little rubber thing off of this bleeder valve. Right, so now that I've got my lower fastener out, I'm just going to lift up and you'll see the brake pads underneath. Now these are the guys that squeeze onto the rotor. So you can take these out. This is the caliper piston and this moves out. Takes this brake pad and squeezes it. You need to push this back by taking a wrench, putting it on the bleeder valve, making these cool needle nose vice grips with pieces of uh, fuel hose put on the outside of them. Just about anywhere there's a brake hose. Squeeze them off. And we have this, which is a piece of tubing, a soft drink bottle. Has brake fluid down on the bottom of it. Giant pair of pliers. As you can see, the piston is pushed back in. You can take this whole caliper out. Now it's time to clean where the pads go. And I use a little bit of brake clean where the pads slide. 
and then take a rag and wipe off any dirt. And I'm going to take apart the uh, rest of the caliper so that I can get the rotor off. Calipers off. Sometimes the rotors won't come off and you need, or they're screwed on, so you need this impact driver tool that you use to get the screws off. Or, if there aren't any screws, then you use a hammer and hit between the studs to try to knock the rotor loose from the hub. Ta -da. What I'm doing here is I'm cleaning off a layer of what's called Cosmoline that's on a new rotor. It's there to keep the rotor from rusting. It's a rust inhibitor, and you need to clean that off before you uh, put it on the car and put new pads on it. It's the sticky, gooey stuff that's there to prevent rust. This is an important one. These are the caliper slides, and a lot of times they get stuck or bound up. And what you want to do is you want to clean off the old lubricant, if there is lubricant. And then I use silicone paste around the outside of them. Don't use grease, it eats the rubber boots for the outside of them. But use silicone paste, it's extremely important. And don't just do the bottom, do the top also. Next, for the brake pads, I use an anti-seize compound on every place the pad will slide. That way, when the brake pads are in there, they'll be able to move back and forth and release properly. And the brakes will perform about as good as they can. So, lube it up. But not so much you got goop everywhere. I'm now reinserting the uh, top pin on the caliper. Uh, sort of get this thing back together. And you'll see me just flop this down, but I cut this for time. But you really need to make sure that those little springs that keep the pads in place are in there properly when you push this caliper down, uh, which is kind of what I'm doing here. So you want to make sure that those pins aren't bound up when you put the caliper back down. Tighten everything up. Ta -da. Okay, one last really important thing. Now that you've finished both sides of the uh, brakes, you want to get inside the car before you move it, before you put it in drive, reverse, whatever, before you back it out of your garage. Make sure you do this. I've seen bad things happen as a result of not doing this important step. And that is to pump the brake pedal until you have a brake pedal. Initially, when you first step on your brakes, after replacing disc brakes, you're not going to have a brake pedal. You're going to have to pump it up a few times in order for that to happen. So, pump the brake pedal until the brake pedal comes up before you move the car. Now that feels like a brake pedal. Now that you've done that, go out, top off the brake fluid. When you push the pistons back and took the fluid and took it out of the caliper, you lost some fluid. So you're going to have to top off the brake fluid. Well, that is the basic rotor and brake pad replacement. Now, different manufacturers have different calipers. They have different ways of doing this. Um, rear calipers are a show in and of themselves, but rear calipers have a lot of different uh, methods of pushing the piston back in to accommodate the new brake pads. So these are things that you need to be aware of. But for the most part, this covers the basic operation and basic replacement of rotors and brake pads. So if you have any questions, please post them as a uh, text response or even a video response to this video. And you can always visit me at ericthecarguy.com. So once again, thanks for watching Eric the Car Guy. See you.